Dimitar, in searching for life in the universe, uh, there are two aspects to it. One is any kind of life, and the second is sentient life that would be able to communicate with us. And based on general numbers, the Drake equation, it seems like the universe should be populated with uh, aliens of different levels. And because we're 14 billion years into the universe, there seems to have been enough time uh, for various generations of stars to come about and uh, uh, for at least one civilization to have developed to the point where it would have some visible effect. And yet, as uh, Fermi famously said, where are they? The Fermi paradox. That with all this theoretical calculation, we see nothing. We see nothing. But if your alien is a microbe, then certainly they may be on every habitable planet out there in the galaxy and on other galaxies. And of course, we'll see nothing if we don't look carefully for them. Um, however, Fermi really had in mind uh, sentient beings, and not only sentient beings, but technologically capable mm -hmm. sentient beings. And he was pointing out two things. The universe is very old, much older than the Earth. And number two, uh, the development of technology seems to be an exponential phenomenon. It happens very quickly once you get to that point. And so um, then the numbers work in, um, in favor of multiple technologies. And that's especially and true now. And there, we don't see anything. And it's especially true now because now we know there are so many planets in, in, in the galaxy, much more than we realized before. So, so the Fermi paradox today is more of a paradox than it was for Fermi. Okay, so I can give you that. It is more of a paradox. I don't have a solution, but let me offer two things. When Fermi uh, talked about that in the 50s, that's when the paradox was mm -hmm. really defined and then Hart put the numbers to it a few years later. Everybody thought that the universe was much older than we know it is today. And that was the time when uh, the age was difficult to determine, but it seemed to be somewhere in the 20, 20. 25 billion years. What we know today is 13.8 billion years, but that's going back to the period of inflation. Let's subtract a billion years for the first stars to form, maybe half a billion years. But as uh, we know, the first stars are not enough to produce all the heavy elements for small rocky planets to form. So we have to reduce that to maybe 10 billion years and maybe even 9 and 8 billion okay. years, when for the first time, a relatively large number, even large not by today's standards, but large number of a few uh, planets like the Earth and super Earths, which are rocky, could form. So now we are talking about the beginning of the planetary era as being eight, nine billion years ago. You don't think that's enough Earth? time? Well, not necessarily. Uh, because if you assume that uh, it took four billion years from the first microbes to us being able to send TV signals and other mm -hmm. signals mm -hmm. out into uh, the galaxy, if you assume that this is the average time, then yes, Fermi is still right, and that's why we don't have an uh, answer to the paradox. But what if this is not necessarily average, but a little bit faster than normal? Then we'll be definitely among the first. And, well, uh, not, not a little bit fast, but the, but the numbers are so large, even if we are among the first, there are still multiple millions, tens of millions, maybe hundreds of millions in the, in the whole universe, even outside our galaxy. But that doesn't mean that we can see them. In other words, that they are the level of, of technology that sure. can transform the galaxy where we can look and say, this is not naturally, uh, right. this is not a natural galaxy. Somebody is messing up with it. <laughs> you know, that's essentially right, what right, right, uh, right. the sure. point was. In fact, Fermi uh, defined the paradox as why aren't they here already? Yeah, right, right. Which is easier to, yeah. <laughs> to say, although, yeah. you know, if their technology is uh, two billion years ahead, uh, how could we tell if they are here? You know, they don't have to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> right, but but all of the arguments that explain Fermi's paradox uh, have have truth to them. You're giving me some now, uh, but but the, the the problem is you don't you don't have to. Win. It's not a question of winning a, uh, a statistical race because you only have to have really one to make an impact. Because if if you assume that a, a technological civilization can last. You only have to have one over a billion years 
and, and you, you gave me eight or eight or nine billion years for, for this to No, I to gave happen. you four. That is between the first planets which could form life. If uh, it took four billion years right. for them, right. then the we, first civilizations that were of our capacity were there in place in the galaxy when our planet started with its own biosphere. Right. So, yeah. so at this point, there would be so four then billion left. Four billion years ahead of us. Right. And so, is that enough? Uh, or I mean, look at uh, well, there are two with, issues here. The first one is: is a civilization like that really detectable? In other words, have they gone, grown out of the uh, noisy, polluting yeah. energy? Um, um, hungry state, mm. number one. Number two, um, are they resilient enough to survive such a long period of time? Um, we know that life is resilient. Uh, our planet, as you see it today, and in fact, as you see it in the geological record two billion years ago, is so entrenched in life at all the different levels and all the different levels of adaptation, including miles down into the crust of mm. the Earth, mm. that it will take nothing short of a astrophysical calamity like throwing the earth into the sun to destroy it completely. You're making the Fermi paradox worse. I'm making the <laughs> Fermi paradox worse if you care about microbes. I'm still not sure that we understand the transition from microbes to a technologically uh, advanced civilization and whether the four billion years that took us that step uh, uh, really uh, a short period of time or a long period of time. It only needs to be in the distribution within a factor of two, and then the paradox goes away. Oh, I don't think so at all. If it's a, 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 a two, because you have a, whatever number it is, it's a distribution around that. So there's still some on the there will be some on uh, the, uh, on the shorter end. time. Sure. And and with a, and with eight billion years to work with, you have enormous amounts of time. And you and again, you only need one. You only need one to hit that technological curve as long as it survives. And if and you maintain, detectable. and if you, and, but if if you maintain the technological exponential growth, which we've certainly seen in a few hundred years, hundred years compared to billion years, it's enormous orders of magnitude. What technology could achieve during that? period is, 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 is incomprehensible, literally. It is incomprehensible, and, and that's why the paradox one. is not resolved. But I, I don't think we can say that it is as strong as this used to be before, simply because uh, you, you need one, but it needs to be one that is energy hungry, and that will transform at least a large number of stars in the galaxy so that we can detect it. That's one Ours way. Is not. That's one way of yes. being detectable. There might be others as well. I mean they the other one they is can signal, they can calm, you know, all yeah. different ways. I mean right. energy hungry to, to recreate uh, 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 big big things that we could see is, is only one way of this of, right. of, de of detection. In any case, um, one uh, step to resolving this paradox is to first find out how easy it is to um, have life on a potentially habitable planet or environment. And that is really the next part, or if you will, the next uh, uh, term in the Drake equation which we need to resolve. And that will require at least detection of one other uh, emergence of life or genesis of life somewhere else. It could be even in the solar system. You know, either way that goes, it's going to be problematic because if life is easy, and on many habitable planets we find life, then the Fermi paradox gets worse. It because... does, yes. <laughs> sure. <Yes. laughs> and if there is difficulty in life on other habitable planets, and it's very, very rare, uh, that creates its own uncertainty. Why? That's true. But let's say we uh, scan a large number of potentially habitable planets, and Mars is a good example, and we find that it's only one in hundred that would end up with life emerging at all, microbial life. Then that will be different from finding that microbial life emerges everywhere, including in a narrow window of opportunity like we have here on Mars. So, again, because you have a limited amount of time to get all the development going and to have the stable environment from microbial life to complex life, to technology, which then survives long enough to be mm -hmm. 
capable of transforming its small part of the galaxy. That, these are the uncertainties which I think still keep the possibility open that f the paradox is resolvable as opposed to simply means nobody is out there.